Right, before we go on to English Bond, like we said we were going to do in the, the last video that we watched, uh, just a quick little recap on the ones that we did do. We did the centralised pairs. These are also called double pairs because they uh, appear on the face and the rear of the wall. Um, so we went through the bond on that one, uh, the offset pair as well. We went through two alternatives on there and then we did the uh, one and a half brick solid attached pair as well. So and we did say that we've got a lot more stretch bond ones but we won't deal with them anymore and we'll keep them ones for the book. Um, but the principles hopefully that you've gained on these ones um, should make uh, work out the ones that we, we're not going to go through and um, just that little bit easier. So as we said um, we're going to go on to English bond now or um, solid work but before we do I thought it'd be a, a nice idea just to uh, go through all of the the bonds that are, are common. Uh, I mean we've just dealt with stretcher bond, we have English and Flemish so um, if we just um, go through this and after um, I've um, just explained the English and the Flemish bond what I'll do then is just go through some variations of uh, both of these uh, bonds as well. So English is the oldest bond, uh, obviously came around in around about Tudor times and um, it was uh, largely used for around about 200 years uh, until the introduction of Flemish bonds. But English bond here we can see is a course of stretches and a course of headers with a queen closure by the corner header and that's the only place that a closure would ever uh, appear. Uh, so it would be on the corner of a building or if it's on the end of a, a pier, by a pier I mean if this was a doorway or a window and a doorway and a window was there then again it would be that the end header would have the closure up alongside it. So nowhere else in a wall would we see a closure apart from on the corners next to the header or up against uh, an opening where we've got a, like, a door or a window. Uh, so English bond is the strongest bond and that's why it's still used today in not that we really build manholes anymore but anywhere where we need some strength um, that's uh, the bond that would be used. Now a long time ago if you look at railway bridges uh, when they were being built you will find that the majority of those will be built in uh, English bond uh, again simply because it, it was the strongest bond. So I'm going to keep this one near at hand because we're going to do a comparison with this and Flemish bond because Flemish bond came along about 200 years later and is regarded as the most attractive bond and that is why lots of houses uh, from the turn of the century um, were sort of built in these uh, I would say well from right about 1700 when it first came uh, into being used uh, lots of the stately homes and and buildings were, were built with this and uh, right up into uh, even up to the Second World War uh, Flemish bond was being used on houses uh, as cavity walls gradually uh, progressed and eventually took over. But um, Flemish bond you can see is stretcher header, stretcher header, stretcher header so you've got stretches and headers alternating in the same course and again we can see the closure up against the corner header. Um, again if I just um, show the the way we can quickly identify these bonds if we uh, do a comparison. Um, where you see the header, if you've got the header closure and then a stretcher you know it's going to be Flemish bond because where you have a header closure and a header you know that's going to be English bond and the variations of English bond will keep this little arrangement and the variations of Flemish bond will keep this little arrangement as well. So the first three bricks that you see will identify the nature of that wall. So as we said we're going to look at the variations of English bond to start off with and then we will look at the variations of Flemish bond uh, straight after that. So very very quickly we go into English garden wall bond and this is again a course of headers but this time instead of one course of stretches we have three, could be five, could be seven. I have to say that I've seen this bond um, quite regularly on a few buildings and uh, I've only ever seen this arrangement with three courses but that could be five or seven. 
Uh, the, another name for this bond is American bond. So this is also called American, if I can spell right. Also known as American bond. Again, the reason for this is because we know that a brick um, is never exactly the same size as the next one. So when we lay bricks, obviously we keep the face lined and nice and true so we get a good face plane, but it does mean the back becomes a little bit bumpy. So if we could reduce the amount of headers in a wall, then obviously we're going to reduce the amount of bumps on the back. So hence we have these uh, courses of stretches just to give a smoother face to the to the rear and that is the same with Flemish garden wall bond as well which we'll look at in a, in a moment so that is English garden wall uh, we have English cross bond which uh, again course of headers and here we can see this little arrangement again header closure header so we know it's an English bond uh, but you can just see the introduction of on the stretcher course every alternate stretcher course we have this header and the reason for that header is we then get what we call diaper bond. So if you had a contrasting brick, we would get this diamond pattern. So that is the, the reason for this bond, just to give a, a decorative. Again, you could have a series of these because they would obviously all go along like so. Um, not quite right, but what we also have then is uh, Dutch bond, which uh, is the same as the English cross bond, but we don't have the closures. Instead of the closures, we have a three quarter on the stretcher course. But again, you can see on the stretcher course, we have this introduction of this header on the alternating stretcher courses. And that again, same with English cross bond, that will give us this diamond pattern. So not only is it called Dutch bond or English cross bond on the previous one, it's also a diaper bond. Diaper just meaning diamonds. Okay, so again, just want to quickly go through these. Um, we're going to go back now to our Flemish bond, just to have a quick little reminder of this. So with our Flemish bond uh, again we're just saying that we have a stretcher header and a stretcher. When it comes to Flemish garden wall bond uh, as with what we said earlier with the English uh, garden wall bond the more stretchers you have the fairer the face will be on the rear or on the back of the wall. So you can see here we have the header, closure, stretcher, but instead of having just a one stretcher we have three, and then a header and then three. And what I want to really point out with Flemish Garden Wall Bond is how balanced it is. You can see that these headers are central to these ones. And then this one here, obviously if this wall continued, would be centre of that as well. So if you had like a, a contrast and brick for Flemish Garden Wall Bond, um, that would um, obviously be a nice balanced and symmetrical looking bond. Um, we can see what I have some, heard some people call um, one of these um, bonds that we're going to look at in a, in a moment, uh, Flemish Garden Wall Bond, but because they haven't got the symmetry as what this has, um, it's not. They've uh, mis misinformed on that one, but we will have a look and see what bond that is in a moment. So this one was Flemish Garden Wall Bond. So we then come to, if I just cover that one for the moment, <clears throat> Monk Bond, which again is a variation of Flemish. As we can see again, we have the header closure stretcher, so that tells it's a variation of Flemish. So, and again, you can see here, this time we have two stretchers to uh, one header in the same course. And again, we can see this balanced brickwork where this header is central of that and then obviously this header is central of those two. So um, uh, again quite a rare bond this one, uh, I've seen it only a couple of times um, and sometimes it gets mixed up with uh, the one I'm now going to show you 
and the one I'm now going to show you does get mixed up with this one as well. So I'll put these two together. Now this one is what we call flying stretcher. Now again, it's got the arrangement of two stretchers and a header, which a lot of people say, oh, that's uh, going to be um, monk bond. But you can see that this is not a symmetrical or a balanced wall simply because all the headers are offset. So uh, again, in my opinion, not a very attractive bond. Um, I have seen this quite a lot, and uh, where I've seen this is where there's been a house, and the front elevation is here. This has been a nice Flemish bond, but the gable ends, which is maybe there's been a walkway between two houses, so you don't really see it, has been built in this flying stretcher. Still, obviously, a solid wall, still a 9-inch wall. Um, but again, not that pleasing to the eye. Um, now, flying stretcher bond sometimes has been... Um, uh, mis, um, uh, how should I say? Uh, people have got the, that wrong by calling that flying stretcher bond. Uh, sorry, flying Flemish bond. Now, flying Flemish, um, we have to go back to... Um, actually, we have to go back to... A monk bond. A monk bond. If this was a red brick wall, we would use a stop and mortar of red brick dust, and we would point that in red, and then we would point this one in red. And what happens there then is the stretchers look really long and it kind of gives uh, again if these were like a contrast and brick it gives the illusion of uh, like a woven effect and that then becomes flying Flemish so that would be flying Flemish only seen that in textbooks never seen that on site anyway um, one thing I didn't mention and that is um, with the Flemish Garden Wall Bond, this is also known as Sussex Bond. Okay, so that's just a, a quick little overview of the various uh, bonds there are. Um, if you want to obviously just go through this again, you can watch it and pause it and just to try and take on board um, the various bonds because I, I know that is very quick and um, sometimes. Um, uh, a little bit too quick maybe so again if you watch this again and just uh, pause it and slow it down um, hopefully you'll be able to um, absorb uh, everything I've just been saying. Um, we will now go back to English Bond but we'll go back to the reason we've, we're doing these um, videos and we will go into the bond arrangements of the corners and of junctions and piers. And finally, um, just going on the variations of Flemish bond. Um, let's have looked at the garden wall bond, which we know now is also known as Sussex bond. We looked at monk bond, flying stretcher, and also flying Flemish. And the last one um, that we uh, we're going to look at is a rat trap bond, which again is uh, like the final uh, variation of uh, Flemish bond. Uh, again, you can see here we have. Uh, the head and the closure are identical really because all the bricks are laid as we can see I've drawn the frogs in just so you can see it better that the bricks are all laid on edge so um, we have the header and obviously uh, there should be the closure but we've got the stretcher there so we know it's a variation of Flemish bond now this bond uh, a lot of people believe this was um, uh, started during the first world war because uh, the shortage of labour when men were going out to fight um, not entirely true um, because this was being built um, quite a long time before um, the First World War but again um, it, it was uh, when labour was short and again you can see by standing the bricks on end you're going to use mess, uh, less materials as well so uh, again it was a, a labour save and a material save and way of doing it. I, I have seen this as well in a, a garden wall um, arrangement as well where instead of having like the traditional stretcher header stretcher um, it's gone to the garden wall where there's been three 
stretches between the headers and that leaves long um, gaps in the, in the middle. Uh, so inadvertently when they were building this they didn't really realize um, that they were forming a cavity uh, in that wall. So um, the first form of cam cavity wall really I suppose but um, again only seen that on very very old um, properties and um, again it's just uh, the final uh, look on Flemish Bond variation.